So excipient compatibility study is conducted with the primary goal of selecting excipients that are compatible with the drug substance. Typically, it is performed with binary mixtures of an API and excipient. The physical and chemical attributes of the drug substance are critical part of the dosage form and one must understand the impact of the used excipient on these attributes. So this video is going to focus on an important attributes of the drug excipient compatibility study which is the related substances. So how one can estimate the related substances out of the excipient compatibility study is going to be a part of our discussion. Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get an absolute clarity on various technical aspects. So if you are struggling with various technical aspects of the pharma industry or struggling with the career growth, please join the Pharma Growth Hub with the help of the link given in the description and know how this platform can help you. So before we move on to the content of today's discussion, let us first understand what is the drug excipient compatibility study. So what one expect out of this uh, particular study? Now this study is conducted to predict the potential interaction, maybe physical, uh, chemical or sometimes microbiological between the drug substance and the excipient used. So as a part of a drug product, let us say you are manufacturing a tell me certain tablet and as a part of product development, the drug excipient compatibility study is conducted. So you have some excipient in your mind. Okay, I am going to use lactose. I am going to use sodium hydroxide. I am going to use the HPMC. But what happens during the stability study? Will this all excipient compatible with the telmisartan or will the telmisartan be compatible with the excipient? Compatible means its physical stability, its chemical stability, its microbiological stability. So all this is generally evaluated as a part of drug excipient compatibility study. So what is the ratio of drug excipient taken for compatibility study? So as I said that the mixture of uh, drug substance and excipient will be prepared and in most of the times generally the drug substance and excipient in the ratio of 1 as to 1 is assessed. There could be some exceptions where different ratios have been used but you can use 1 as to 1 ratio of drug substance and the excipient and the example is what let us say you have used 100 milligram of the telmisartan so you also use 100 milligram of the lactose so lactose is what is excipient which is proposed excipient for manufacturing of the telmisartan tablet so whatever excipient that you are targeting to use those all excipient you have to use during the drug excipient compatibility study for example if you target 10 different excipient so you will make the 10 different mixtures of the telmisartan with those 10 different excipient so telmisartan plus excipient 1 this is one composition then again telmisartan plus excipient 2 this is your second com uh, composition telmisartan plus excipient 3 this is your third uh, composition. So you make all the uh, mixtures of the telmisartan with the excipient plus you also load the telmisartan alone as such without adding any excipient plus you will also have a telmisartan plus all the excipient all together that you can say telmisartan plus the all excipient and finally it is also a good idea to load the mixture of all the excipient all together onto the drug excipient study. So how does the sample of drug excipient compatibility is prepared? So the drug excipient, uh, the drug substance and excipient are weighed and mixed into a suitable container. Most of the times I have seen that the amber colored glass vials or even transparent glass vials are used 
and then those samples will be kept at different conditions like room temperature at 40 75 at 50 degrees celsius in open or closed conditions uh, and how long the study has to be uh, you know uh, taken place maybe up to four weeks or a month's time so you withdraw the sample at two weeks you you withdraw the sample at four weeks time and understand uh, the various uh, critical attributes of uh, your product so what are the parameters that generally evaluated as a part of uh, excipient compatibility study so i am actually moving on to the analysis part now so as a part of drug excipient compatibility study you want to understand what is the impact of the excipient onto the drug substance and the impact can be physical or the chemical or sometimes microbiological also so, but most of the times the physical attributes like polymorph and chemical attributes like related substances or impurities are evaluated as a part of your drug excipient compatibility study now when you are using the uh, it's the method for evaluation of related substances make sure that the method is already been validated so most of the times i have seen people using the api's method because you must have filed the dmf the, the method is already validated so the api's method meets the validation requirement and hence it can be used now how do you calculate related substances by using an hplc or gas chromatography technique most of the times the related substances for the drug substance is evaluated either by hplc or gas chromatography now when i talk about api's method when you analyze the api for related substances there is no presence of the excipient isn't it but in this situation now, as you are conducting the drug and excipient compatibility study, your sample does not contain only drug substance, but it also has an excipient into it. So with this context, I would like to explain the further process of the calculation now. So what I say that the people use the uh, approach of calculating the related substances by percent area normalization. So this is the first approach I have seen people using. The second approach I saw people using is the by using an external standard. Now this is a much popular way of calculating the related substances. You make the diluted standard out of your reference standard and then you compare the response of the impurities against that uh, external diluted standard. Sometimes if you have no idea about the calculation you can think about whatever approach is used in the api's test procedure for calculation of related substances i will use the same approach so you are just going to follow the actual test procedure so according to you i have a question for you now so which approach do you consider which is much accurate and preferable whether approach one two or three type in a chart box below in the comment box below so now during calculation do you need to use the drug substances weight present in a sample while using the percent area normalization approach that is the approach number one in case if you are using the approach number one which is calculation of the impurities by using percent area normalization do you really need to have the drug substances weight present into a sample and if you know that it is not really required so you need not to have the api's weight present into a sample in case if you are using the percent area normalization method i have a second question for you let us say you are using the external standard approach that is approach number two for calculation of the impurities so during the calculation do you need to use the drug substances weight present in a sample while using an external standard approach what do you think do you apply the weight of uh, drug substance present into a sample in the calculation where the external standard has been used and certainly yes so you need to have the weight of the drug substance present into a sample in case if you are using the approach number two 
or if you are using external standard for calculation of the related substances. Now my, the next question is very important. Now how do you determine the weight of a drug substance present into a drug excipient mixture while using an external standard approach? Let us assume you are using external standard approach and as discussed you need to have a weight of a drug substance present into a sample. Now this excipient compatibility study is barely performed by mixing and mixing the drug substance with an excipient. So the underlying question over here is how you are going to understand or determine the weight of the drug substance present into a sample. And here are different approaches. So the first approach by weighing the part of the content from the sample container and applying a proportionate factor of a drug substance. I am going to provide you multiple approaches and you need to tell me which approach is more preferable or which approach you are using. So are you going to, let us say when the drug excipient compatibility started, you will have the mixtures filled into a different container. For example, you are using the glass vials to fill those mixture of your API and excipient. And as a part of this study, you have made, let us say, one as to one mixture of API and drug substance. So if you weigh, let us say, 100 milligram of mixture of API plus excipient, what I said, if you weigh 100 milligram of the mixture of API plus excipient, and if I say that, this excipient and API is mixed with the ratio of 1 as to 1. So this 100 milligram of the mixture will contain how much weight of the drug substance. So I, I can multiply this 100 milligram by 50 because 50% makes this 1 as to 1 and I will get 50 milligram as the weight of the API. But Though it looks to be very simple and straightforward, the real question will be, what is the homogeneity of this mixture? Will this API get completely homogenized with the excipient? And if the answer to this question is yes, then this approach stands valid. But in case if the API doesn't have the homogeneous content or the mixture with the excipient, if it is not homogeneous throughout the mixture, then you will never understand that whether that 100 milligram of the portion taken for the weight actually really contain the 50 milligram of the API or not. I am talking about the content uniformity. If the content uniformity is not achieved during mixing while preparation of the drug excipient compatibility while, then the approach number one may not be a suitable one. I hope you understand. The second approach can be by weighing the entire content from the sample container and applying a proportionate factor for a drug substance. Now before I explain about the approach number two where you are actually transferring the entire content of the vial into a volumetric flask for further treatment or sample preparation. Now what is the concern with the approach number one? What I said over here, you are not going to transfer the entire weight of the mixture, but you are going to take the part weight of the mixture. And during the weighing, there can be a segregation possible. There can be situation where the content of API or excipient is sticking to the surface of the vial. And that makes it highly ununiform. And hence, you will not be able to meet the homogeneity requirement. So rather than weighing in a part, you have decided to transfer the entire content from the sample container into a volumetric flask. So there is no segregation possible during weighing because you use butter paper, right? And during that, the segregation of the mixture is possible. But in the approach number two now, 
you have sorted out the concern of segregation during weighing and i have often seen most of the times people transfer the entire content onto the into the volumetric flask and again even they rinse the container with the diluent so that none of the api or excipient left over on the surface of the container you are very much sure the entire content is transferred into the volumetric flask during the sample preparation so according to you which approach is best one approach number 1 or approach number 2 if you say okay the approach number 2 is great one because there is no issue of non homogeneous sample but let me ask you let us say you have transferred uh, 100 mg of the uh, entire mixture right you said that finally i have calculated that 100 mg of the api plus drug excipient mixture has been transferred 100 100 mg and according to you as this is a one as to one ratio the content of api should be how much 50% right so 50% of 100 mg becomes 50 mg but do you know that it is really going to be 50 mg as i said it is the one as to one that doesn't guarantee that the pharmaceutical i mean the analyst or the chemist has exactly weighed the excipient and drug in the similar way a similar weight like 50 mg of the drug substance and exactly 50 mg of the excipient now the answer may may be no for this question it is very hard to use exactly the 50 mg of api and 50 mg of excipient you, you can have the 50.50 of the api and 50.10 mg of the excipient now they are not exactly in the one as to one ratio so to sort out this issue you can think of the approach number 3 what is the approach number 3 now by weighing the entire content from the sample container and by using the weight of a drug substance taken during excipient mixture preparation so you are not apply this uh, proportionate factor which is 50% in example 1 or 2 i mean in approach number 1 and 2 but what you are going to consider you are going to consider the actual weight of the drug substance taken during preparation of the excipient drug mixture so now tell me in case if you have the actual weight of the api then what is the error that you are going to uh, meet with with the approach number 3 now what is the requirement over here you need to transfer the entire content of the sample it is very important that you are not going to miss any kind of any amount of api inside the container and you know that as the api is not going to get generated over a period of time right the initial api weight will still stands valid and hence the approach number 3 looks to be much suitable as compared to approach number 1 or approach number 2 so i have a question for you now so which approach do you use during weighing of the drug substance present into a sample and this particular requirement only can arises in case if you are using an external standard method for calculation of the related substances see the actual api is weight will never required in case of percent area normalization method but in case if you are using uh, an external standard method for calculation of related substances then you need to determine the weight of a drug substance present into a sample and these are the three different approaches you can use but i propose to use the final approach that is approach number 3 for determination of the api weight present into a sample having talked about uh, the determination of the api weight present into a uh, drug excipient compatibility sample the fundamental question is now but how one can decide the weight of a drug substance while preparation of the excipient drug mixture isn't it so what points you need to consider while preparation of those mixtures 
टेलमिसर्टान प्लस लैक्टोज टेलमिसर्टान प्लस एच पी एम सी टेलमिसर्टान प्लस मैग्नेशियम ऑक्साइड सो हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेट ऑफ द ड्रग्स ऑफ सन्स एंड आई हैव सम अप्रोचेस फॉर यू ओवर श्योर द फर्स्ट अप्रोच कैन बी बाय कंसिडरिंग द वेट ऑफ द ड्रग्स सब्सटेंस टू बी टेकन ड्यूरिंग द रिलेटेड सब्सटेंसेस एनालिसिस लेट अस से यू आर गोइंग टू यूज द टेलमिसर्टान एपीआईज आरएस मेथड फॉर दिस स्टडी एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द टेलमिसर्टान आरएस मेथड द सैंपल इज प्रिपेयर्ड इन द फॉलोइंग वे वे एंड ट्रांसफर 100 मिलीग्राम ऑफ द टेलमिसर्टन इनटू ए 100 एमएल ऑफ द वॉल्यूमेट्रिक फ्लास्क सो हाउ मच ऑफ द टेलमिसर्टन एपीआई यूज्ड इट इज 100 मिलीग्राम इजंट इट सो व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू नाउ व्हाइल प्रिपेयरिंग दोस मिक्सचर्स फॉर ड्रग एक्सेप्शन कंपैटिबिलिटी स्टडी आई एम गोइंग टू वे 100 मिलीग्राम ऑफ द टेलमिसर्टन नाउ टू मीट दिस वन एज टू वन रिक्वायरमेंट then i need to understand how much of the lactose has to be used lactose is the excipient for example so if the 100 mg is the tell me certain then 100 mg of the lactose has to be used so i will meet the requirement of 1 as to 1 ratio so this is the way you can prepare the drug excipient samples so that you will have no difficulties while executing the related substance size analysis the second approach is what now it can be you have some generic approach you will say okay for drug excipient compatibility we have an sop in the place and that sop says that you have to use 100 mg of the drug substance per container but i have a question for you again which approach according to you is preferable is the approach one preferable is the approach two preferable or do you recommend any third approach for preparation of those mixtures i hope you must have found the the content of the presentation valuable thank you so much